design thinking is the process of creating innovation by defining a very specific area of improvement and then identifying the persona that you need to solve for and the customer journey, the current customer journey, any pain points and areas of improvement that you can define. And this is the empathize stage. Then once you define that persona, you can actually come and define the problem. So that's the problem definition stage of design thinking for creating innovation. And at this stage, you really want to look at the persona and their current customer journey, and you want to define what's the problem that they're experiencing. If there is any problem, of course, you can't make it up. The way you can define the problem and understand the customer journey and the pain points of the persona is through primary market research. That means going out there in the real world and actually asking questions, qualitative questions, open-ended questions that enable you to get out of your mind and into the mind of the persona that you identified. The persona really is an avatar of the ideal type of person that you are innovating for. And asking open-ended questions allow you to gain deep insights into what they feel when they are having that particular experience. And once you define the problem within your team, then you have a clear understanding of what you are solving for and why. And so problem definition is oftentimes overlooked because defining a problem carefully and deeply enough can feel uncomfortable and emotionally overwhelming in the short term. Because oftentimes each person in the team has different angles of view for the same problem. And so that's an issue of getting into one common understanding of what the problem is and why you're actually tackling that problem. And that's why the problem definition stage is incredibly, incredibly important in design thinking. Because only when you have a clear understanding of the problem and you have it written down clearly, that you can actually improve and solve the issue or innovate for that persona, that specific demographic of people that you're looking at within a population. And once you have the understanding of the problem in design thinking, then you can start to ideate. So the ideation stage gets you out of the definition of the problem, out of the empathizing with the persona, and into creating ideas. No matter how bad they are in the beginning, that's ideation. Ideation is like when you're a child and you're throwing ideas around in the most creative way possible. You don't even know why, but it is part of your nature. And so during ideation, you really want to tap into that free child and get into the state of pristine creativity that doesn't have any judgment, at least in the first part. So in ideation, you might want to use techniques such as the crazy eight or the hot potato. And these techniques enable you to enhance that creative free child where you can come up with ideas as fast as possible, even if they are incredibly bad, because at that stage, you don't have any judgment. And then once you have concluded the ideation stage, you can actually put a filter into your ideas and build on top of each other within your team. And then you can rank all the, those ideas to ensure that you can prioritize the key features that you agree on are the most important based on the problem definition and the persona. And that enables you to get into the fourth stage, which is prototyping. And prototyping is quite fast here as well. In the design thinking process, you want to be fast because you want to get out of your office chair and into the real world, testing things out and receiving feedback. And that's the best way to learn in anything in life, really. You want to have a feedback loop of some sort that enables you to stop overthinking and actually get into the people's minds and understand how they feel and how they think. And so really, you want to drop any confirmation biases that you have at this stage and actually listen and test. And so prototyping, at least in the first version, can be very rudimental. You can assemble a shopping cart with made up items that you find in your office or in your house. And then you want to test. You want to walk the testing users in the sort of journey that they're going to follow for that product without giving them any hints, but making them figure things out and having them speak as much as possible, sharing their, their feelings and their thoughts as they use your product. 
to ensure that you can actually get honest, candid feedback, because feedback will help you go back to ideation, go back to problem definition, go back to the persona definition, and then at every stage of iteration, you can actually improve your overall system. And so testing really is actually the final stage of design thinking after prototyping. And through testing, you gain that feedback, and then you go back to prototyping, you go back to ideation, the problem definition. And at the prototype level, it will ensure that you can improve that prototype at every iteration. And then you can test again and gain feedback. And that's a loop until you actually get incredibly closer to solving that problem. And when you get incredibly close to solving that problem with your prototype, then you can actually start launching it into the market and refining it until you reach the perfect ideal state of your product, which actually you will never reach because it's constantly an iteration game in design thinking and innovation. And that's the whole design thinking process. So this notion template really takes those principles and compresses them into a centralized system where if you work with your team, you can use this as the place where you can write things down. Because when you work in a team, if you do not write things down, especially in a process like design thinking, that is very complex to comprehend, and it is incredibly iterative. And when you work in a team, there are often misunderstandings, especially when defining a problem. And so this notion template enables you to write everything down in a systematic manner. And that's a very minimalistic template because in the same thinking, you want to be out in the world, not sitting in your office chair, writing in Notion. And so this template has sprints, personas and customer journeys, problem definition, ideation, prototypes and testing sessions. And you can reuse this system for as many innovations and problems that you want to have over time within your team, within yourself. So the first real step here is sprints. Sprints are basically a design thinking project. That's how you can think about it. So whenever you open a sprint or you create a new one, you have here the sprint name, and you have the team working on that sprint. You have a start date and an end date. Then you have the status. So for one specific persona or problem, you might also have multiple sprints, depending on how you think about it. But you can think, think about a sprint as the overarching project compresses your entire design thinking experience in one key bucket. And so within a sprint, you will define the persona, you will define the customer journey, like this, for example. You have the name of the persona here. You have the status, because you refine it over time. And then within the persona page, you have the psychographics, the demographics, typical statement, complementary products that they buy and use. And then you can embed mirror boards or whimsical boards or whatever embed you like, just by using slash embed, like this. So that everyone can have a source of truth get back into whenever you have misunderstandings or whenever you feel lost. You have everything in a system already. And you also have the next actions in simple checkboxes, as simple as possible. Then once that is done, you can go into problem definition. So in here, you can create a new entry, and this is what it looks like. So you link a problem to a specific persona, and then define the problem exactly here in written format. You can take notes about the problem. You can comment on each other's notes because that's a collaborative journey. And you can define next actions as well. And once the problem is done, you go to ideation. So now you get out of empathizing and into creativity, into craziness in terms of defining ideas. And then in here, you also have a timer. For example, if you wanna use the crazy eight technique, you wanna have eight minutes, eight independent ideas per person in your team. And so you can use this timer here to have that one minute time frame within which you want to generate one idea per team member. And here you can write down your ideas and you can have next actions and you can tag people with the next actions just by typing their name like that. The person followed by the text so that they receive a notification within Notion. And then you have prototyping. So you do ideations, 
then you create prototypes. You can create multiple prototypes if you like. And for prototypes, depending on your product, you might need wireframes in Figma, for example, and you can embed those here. Or you might need physical products if you are working on a shopping cart, for example. And in that case, you can have a mix as well of wireframes that are digital or sketched, in which case you can embed a picture of the sketch and the physical products, the actual shopping cart put together in the early stages by just combining multiple recycled materials. And finally, you want to test. So testing, you might have testing sessions with users. And in that case, you can note your testing session and then take notes about it. So what's the method that you're going to use? What are notes from the people? What are their statements, their feelings during the testing? Because these are the insights that you will need to use in the iterative process when you go back to prototyping and you go back to ideation and problem definition. And then you can have your next actions per session. And here you will have a calendar of all your testing sessions that you will have in your roadmap for each and every persona and problem definition. And then really, eventually you have this dashboard here where you have the quick access. Here you can jot down any quick notes or action items or announcements for the team. And then you have this sprints timeline, which puts together all the sprints in order of date. And then each sprint is a page that you can open to see the entire dashboard for the sprint. Persona, problem, ideation, prototyping, testing. And then you have testing sessions directly here as well where you can see all the testing sessions, regardless of what sprint or problem they belong to. So if you're working on multiple problems at a time, this is the master calendar where you can see all of them. Whereas if you want to see just the testing sessions for a specific sprint or problem that you're working on, then you will see them within the sprint page down here in the testing calendar. And really that is all there is in this design thinking toolkit template. The core idea is that you want to get a common understanding when you innovate. And it doesn't matter how complex your system is. The key thing is that you write things down so that you don't get lost in words. And you actually have a source of truth where everyone can understand what you're solving, why you're solving it, and what you can do about it. You can find the link to this template in the description. Please feel free to drop any comments if you have questions thoughts about this and thank you for now see you soon